but most importantly, I finally wrote who done it. Comparison to others, comparison to myself, comparison to my expectations. All zero draft words. I have another part where I just have a whole lot of scenes to fill in. Aha, this time I do get a word. Hey guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to the continuation of the daily vlogs until I finish this freaking NaNoWriMo novel. <laughs> I'm actually almost already done with my tea. That's how long this last scene took me. <laughs> but today I do have a specific topic that I want to talk about other than just what I'm working on. <sighs> as a stats fan, as a numbers fan, as a goals fan, I find it very easy to get caught up in comparison, which as Teddy Roosevelt famously said, is the thief of joy. <laughs> I personally struggle with this off and on and in different bouts of intensity. Comparison to others, comparison to myself, comparison to my expectations. It's like, why haven't I times a thousand? Why haven't I published yet? Why haven't I queried yet? Why haven't I finished this novel yet? Why? Why? The weirdest part for me is that for all of my hobbies and my work, I found a way to quantify them. Occasionally to their detriment. Not their detriment, my detriment. <laughs> Writing is super easy to do this with. I've talked before about like using words as a measure of productivity, which I had a whole topic about, so I won't delve into it here about why that's not always the best. But anyways, it's so easy to do. But also things like number of months spent on a project, checkbox, yes or no, if I've like published or sold it or queried it. And not only that, but I set goals. So I have expectations of did I meet this goal? And then I can watch other people who sold the first article they ever wrote or were published at X age. But I do it for running and working out too. Like, am I faster now? Can I go longer now? Can I lift heavier? Can I do more reps? And then there's author tube where numbers are so clearly at the forefront that they show you the number of views and likes and comments that a video has, like just by clicking on it. Also, I want to show you Hank Green's story on the Vlogbrothers channel about this topic. Hold on. I'm fine. I'm fine. Have you seen my new video? It's 10 minutes long. It, it is not doing as well as my, our usual videos. And then on our end, we can see things like watch hours and like, Honestly, even as a stats person, a whole lot of stats. Maybe more stats than needed. <laughs> and then you can compare yourself to others in terms of subscribers or view counts. Quite frankly, it is exhausting. Which of course is why I try not to get sucked into those thoughts, but it's, it's freaking hard, right? Like I'm not the only one, it's hard. And I haven't personally found a way to combat this other than like acknowledging it when it's happening, let myself feel whatever kind of way about it and then giving myself a break from that thing. But this is exactly the kind of thing, this kind of weird pep talk that I try to give myself when I'm looking ahead into the next year and setting goals. I still gotta fill this out for December. And I've talked before about how your goals need to be focused on like the things you can actively do, the steps that you can take rather than being solely focused on those checkpoint like items like selling a hundred copies copies of your book, but of course, I, I still do both. <laughs> Especially because I find those kind of goals to also be inspirational. I find that kind of comparison helpful sometimes. Like when I was trying to raise Emily Bourne for a weekend of writing, that kind of competition and comparison was helpful to me. <laughs> so to loop all of this back in, <laughs> with my initial NaNoWriMo goal to finish the 75,000 words, to have a completed draft by the end of November, to be totally honest, past me would have been really upset that I didn't meet that goal. To the point that when I think I realized that just wasn't gonna happen, past me would have gotten so frustrated and doubt on myself that I might not have continued on. I make this point to also say that I have evolved. <laughs> I've kept journals and notebooks and like goal setty kind of stuff for years now so I can see how I feel each year. And the greatest part for me is that I feel like I've really progressed in the treatment of myself, which is, fantastic. <laughs> also because I said before in my 2018 goals, maybe even in my 2017 goals, did I make a video for that? The goal I have is to finish this final, 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 final draft of a story and then query an agent. My third goal is to query an agent. It only has to be one. Just one. I've had that as a goal for a while now, for multiple years now, regarding multiple stories. And so of course, 2019, I've stated that really is a goal. That is the goal for the beautiful Project Blue over here. And depending on the state of my NaNoWriMo novel toward the year's end, it might also be a goal for 2019 for this novel. If of course I don't get an agent already with Project Blue, AKA the Meridian Maps. I also wanna make the point that when I was originally writing down my thoughts and feelings for a topic like this, the date in my notes was November 21st. So clearly, whatever was happening on November 21st, I was feeling 
some kind of way about comparing myself. I don't know if it was the two others to myself or to my expectations, but I'd love for you to please comment down below and let me know if this is something that you've ever struggled with. Do you ever compare yourself to others or to yourself or to where you think you were supposed to be or have or do by a certain time? I would love to hear about it. All right, I will promptly stop talking about goal stuff now because honestly, I got a goal to meet. <laughs> my goal is 65,000. That was a bit of a stretch goal. So really my goal is just the 2,500 a day. I'm already at 409 words. I have another part where I just have a whole lot of scenes to fill in. And honestly, not only does that scene need to be filled in, but the timeline's also off. So it's like I have doubled the amount of scenes to fill in for that one little insert this here bracket. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. All zero draft words, woohoo! But actually my hot spurs are on and they're losing. So I'm gonna go watch them while I write. Goal! <laughs> well, my team lost. <laughs> I did manage to actually get some words in during the game though. And I finished chapter 26, but most importantly, I finally wrote who done it. Ah! The thing that we had been kind of like leading up to this entire, not the entire novel because ultimately the novel really wasn't about who kidnapped them, but I finally answered the question I raised at the beginning of the novel. You know what I mean? I'm such a huge fan of like layering questions throughout the novel. Like who did this? What's going to happen next? How does this affect this? Like just posing little things in there so that it keeps the reader interested. And this was finally one that I got to answer at the very end. So, oh my gosh. I mean, very end. Wow. Okay. I am technically technically sitting on page 99 of 101 of my original zero draft of this story. I knew that I was getting close. I didn't realize I was getting that close. This might not even be 75,000 words worth of story. I might have been wrong. This might only be 70,000. <gasps> I, oh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I'm just sitting here trying to figure out how all of the elements in my head are going to fit in, but when really the answer is just to write them and find out. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I guess that's the only thing left to do. I almost hit the day's word count goal. <laughs> but since that is the end of the chapter and I'm gonna have to start a new chapter, I'm gonna go ahead and just call it a day. So that means I only have one thing left to do today and that is my shout outs. Now yesterday, I forgot to do this. I was so in the zone and I pulled Rowan's name at the very end so that I would talk about him today. Rowan's channel is Rowan Tree Editing and he also did NaNoWriMo daily vlogs this year. In fact, Rowan and I actually met because we were both doing daily vlogs last year too. And one of the things that I enjoy most about Rowan's content and is just like him, he is just so cool and unique and unlike anyone else I've actually seen on AuthorTube. He leaves incredible responses on everyone's videos. So like not just my videos, which I always appreciate seeing him in my inbox, but also other people's videos to the point that I like scrolling through comments just to see if Rowan has commented because I feel like he always brings something not just as a response to the video itself, but also just brings up a whole other topic that's like, oh, this made me think of this. And it's, oh, it's always so cool to read. And in his daily vlog specifically, I've always loved how he talks about his novel and the process that he uses. He often writes in the utopian genre, which is something that I'd like to see more of that I don't see enough of. And he does give great book recommendations, whether it's utopian or otherwise. But just the way that he speaks in general he speaks so eloquently about the topics that he chooses and I always wish that I could talk like that in my videos. Another thing that I really enjoy about Rowan is that he is also a freelance editor. So following along with his monthly and yearly goals is always fascinating because I feel like there's an aspect that matches up with mine as a freelance writer. And so it's just, it's so cool getting to have someone to talk about that kind of stuff with and who understands. And also it's fun because he's not only working on his own novels to write his own, but also he's really helping to make other people's novels better, which I think adds a layer to like the content that he provides author tube. Anyways, I will of course leave Rowan's links up above and down below. You guys should definitely go and check him out. Let's see if I pull one other person. <laughs> this one. Oh, Alexandra. Alexandra is such a sweetheart. She's been commenting on my videos for about seven months now, it looks like. Look at all of this. It is always so fun to chat with her. She is writing this novel about this freaking chinchilla, you guys. And not just one novel, like I think she's on her second or third one 
It might be third. Alexandra, correct me down below if, if I'm wrong. I think it might be your third one now. It's Daisy the Chinchilla, and I always look forward to her comments when she's telling me about her story because they're Oh, the quotes are always so cool. They're always so funny. And the chinchilla, Daisy feels like my spirit animal a little bit. Is that weird? <laughs> Alexandra doesn't make videos herself, but she is always so supportive and her comments always just lift me up and make me happy. And she was so sweet. I remember one time when I was talking about trying to get more watch hours because that was something talking about goals in this video. That's one of the little barriers that YouTube sets. And she's like, okay, I'm gonna go on a watching spree. And I was like, Alexandra. I was like, you don't have to, but that's very sweet of you. That's very nice. <laughs> she is also self-published, so I know that I'll be reaching out to her when I have some more questions because y'all know me. I have all of the questions. But anyways, I really just want to say thank you so much, Alexandra, for all of your kind, heartwarming, lovely comments. I appreciate it so much. And thank you guys all for watching. The questions for you that I asked earlier in the video will be down below if you'd like to check them out. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all tomorrow with another video. And again, hopefully more words, please. Please stop <laughs> by. Also, I'm planning on tracking the books that I read this coming year better than I've been tracking in the past. And I have these cute stickers. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs>